Hi, it's Mark again and we're continuing our series of videos on European Inter-Parties Pattern Review, otherwise known as Opposition before the European Patent Office. And we're looking about the hearing and what goes on in that. Now these are generally personal recollections, personal impressions, um, because at the end of the day the detail of the particular proceedings, the detail of the particular case will be what's before you at the time. You will know that better than I possibly can. But I can give you a few uh, suggestions, a few thoughts from my experience. And one of the key points is having that experience. Um, please don't go to a hearing for the first time and be the lead representative. Or if you're going for the first time as a uh, opponent or the representative the proprietor, make sure you've got a representative who's got experience to help you along. Because the last thing you need to do is to have somebody um, pull um, an unusual move and everybody gets completely confused and the credibility of the opposition can be lost through that. So we talked about the initial uh, response and the chairman will decide uh, what the order of proceedings will take place as. It might start with added matter, it might start with sufficiency of disclosure and sooner or later if you've survived that or should I say if you're an opponent you've unfortunately not won using those grounds you will then move on to novelty and inventive step. Now then because of the right to be heard the chairman in the proceedings will usually allow the opponent to put whatever um, submissions they wish in terms of deciding which documents to use. However, when you're talking about 20 or 30 documents, um, the opponent will be expected to be relatively selective. There is only a certain amount of time in the day, although I must admit I've found opponents and even proprietors who seem to think there is an endless day. But bear in mind that the proceedings will finish towards the end of the day. Most proceedings don't normally go beyond about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Yes, I've been in a proceedings that went until 10.30 at night, but that really was one of those anecdotal, unusual situations. Most proceedings take one day and will be aimed to finish at the end of the day. So if somebody talks too long, then sooner or later the chairman is likely to be saying, please give us your best arguments, please give us your best case, and be more insistent upon that. And really, it is worthwhile to actually put your best arguments forward, whether in defence or in attack, just to make sure that really you're putting a credible, credible position across and that if that opposition ground fails, then you can have a reasoned discussion um, amongst yourselves as to what to do next. Now I say that because what happens in the proceedings is there will be a, a ground, there will be an opposition, um, there will be the response to that opposition by the proprietor and then the parties will be asked to leave the room and the opposition division will then spend some time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes maybe even up to an hour, discussing a particular point. You'll be invited back into the hearing and told what the ruling is. Now at that point, that is the ruling. So there's not too much point in trying to counter-argue it. What is very, very useful at that stage is to try and get some impression as to, well, what are the grounds, what was the key decision, what was the key point that was taken into account which led them to that decision because that may well have a large impact on what you do next. Do you need to put in a further claims request? Do you need to look at a further combination of documents which might actually take a key document and remedy the deficiency with your previous attack by for example citing some further common general knowledge to substantiate a point or if we're in inventive step maybe a combination of different documents. So that time out of the room, you really need to be working on your, well, if this goes against us, what will we do? So it can be one of those counterintuitive positions where you will hope that you will win a point, but you shouldn't actually think about that at all, because if you win, well, it's simply going to be on to the next um, position in the, in the uh, proceedings. The thing you should maybe be thinking about is, well, if I lose, what am I going to do then? because it's much easier to plan for wins than it is to plan for losses. So yes, you'll be thinking outside the hearing what you're going to do, you'll be invited back in, and then the proprietor, if they've lost a particular point, will be invited to say what they will do next. Now you have got the potential of asking for a recess, but generally you're expected to um, have a, a fair indication, a pre-prepared uh, position to decide where you go next. And similarly, as an opponent, if you've lost a given point, 
then you will want to have a clear position, a clear next line of attack that you want to go through. And again, that will be gone through, a particular document, a particular approach will be taken, and then you're asked to go out of the hearing again, and the opposition division, division will consider. And as you go through this, you really need to be being quite clear about what the, what the line of thought is, what the line of reasoning is. Because there's nothing worse than getting into a, into a position where you're not quite sure why they made the last point, the last decision, and in that situation, it's very hard to plan ahead. So really asking those questions to try and politely understand what their position is, how they've made a decision is key. Because that decision has been made, it's not going to be changed. So if there's a particular conclusion on the way the claim has been construed in terms of added matter or sufficiency of disclosure, or perhaps on the novelty, there might be a particular claim, a particular interpretation of a shape or a chemical name, um, or how a combination of materials interacts. You really need to know and understand that because that's the building block on which further reasoning is taken, going to take place. So if you've got a particular ruling on novelty, you need to try and build upon that when you, have, for example, get through to inventive step. Now, I know all these concepts are probably fairly straightforward, fairly motherhood and apple pie, but it's still sometimes worth thinking about them because each person has a slightly different view on these things and learning from other people's experiences is usually quite valuable. So I thank you very much for listening to this series of videos and I will simply conclude now by saying that at the end the chairman will make a decision and that decision will be final. You will know at the day what that decision is but the final actual report will come out later and in my final videos I will then talk about the final report and the possibility of appeal. Thank you.